let's study the radius yes first of all sign determination where it is situated it is situated onto the forearm yes it is the bone of the forearm what is another bone that is the ulna yes. so ulna and the radius so radius is onto the lateral side of the forearm okay fine how to do the sign determination this portion round portion that is known as the head of the radius it should be superiorly yes it should be superiorly then this portion is known as the radial styloid process it should be inferiorly as well as it should be laterally okay the so superior and lateral two things i can also do onto the onto my left hand also yes here the head is also superiorly radius is onto the lateral side and styloid process is onto the lateral side then remember this portion this tubercle portion it should come onto the posterior side yes that tubercle should be onto the posterior side that's why it is which side of uh, radius it is the right side of the radius so head that should be onto the superior side styloid process lateral side and this tubercle portion that is known as the dorsal tubercle of the lister yes that should be onto the posterior side and you can also say that this is a sharp border that should be onto the medial side or this tuberosity portion that is known as the radial tuberosity it should also also be onto the medial side so it should be into our body yes we can do like this tuberosity medially border is medially styloid process is laterally head is superiorly now external features other this portion is known as the constricted portion that is known as the neck of the radius this is the tuberosity tuberosity also having the two part anterior rough part and posterior uh, sorry i just do mistake anterior that is the smooth part and posterior rough part then this border which is uh, coming in relationship with the sharp border of the ulna that is known as the interosseous border now if we look into the shaft we have three borders anterior border medial border and just parallel to the anterior border there is a posterior border three border anterior posterior and medial and we have three surfaces anterior surface between the medial and the anterior border then posterior surface is onto the between the medial border and the posterior border and between the anterior and posterior border we have the lateral surface three surfaces anterior surface lateral surface and the posterior surface okay fine then on to the lower end we have one smooth part here in which the head of the ulna is articulated so that's why it is known as the ulnar notch on to the radius yes that is ulnar notch on to the radius here there will be the inferior radial ulnar joint and on to the this portion at which the radius head is articulating that is known as the superior radial ulnar joint yes so they, these two bones are giving uh, each other a support yes one is articulating ulna is articulating at the lower notch and radius is onto the superior part okay fine now this is the styloid process and you must remember there are fossa for the carpal bones one here articulating that is the scaphoid and here there will be the articulation of the lunet so we can also say fossa for the scaphoid and the fossa for the lunet clear okay we go to the radius yes <clears throat> remember most most important attachment on to the lateral surface and this tuberosity one important muscle which is attached on to the radial tuberosity that is the biceps brachii which is a biceps brachii which is also on to the posterior rough part mainly then <clears throat> remember main three muscles attachment superb one that is the supinator here there is a pronator teres and on to the lower part styloid process there is a brachio radialis supinator pronator teres and brachio radialis superb now remember three muscles on to the anterior surface one muscle from here that is the fds known as the flexor digitorum superficialis the majority of the part we have uh, one muscle that is uh, going on to the thumb and which is responsible for the flexion that is the flexor pollicis longus yes it is a flexor pollicis longus 
and onto the lower part there is a one muscle which is originating from the ulna and inserting onto the radius it is a quadrate shape that's why it is known as the pronator quadratus yes it is helpful for the pronation yes <coughs> attachment onto the radius onto the lateral surface we have three main muscles supinator pronator teres and brachioradialis onto the anterior surface we have three muscles main flexor digitorum superficialis flexor pollicis longus and here there will be the pronator quadratus now onto the posterior surface we have two main origin from this side both the muscles are responsible for the movement of the thumb those are one that is the abductor and another that is the extensor so one that is known as the abductor pollicis longus and another that is the extensor pollicis brevis so that's how you remember nine muscles onto the radius let's do quick revision most important one muscle remember all the time that is the biceps brachii onto the radial tuberosity then remember supinator then pronator teres brachio radialis flexor digitorum superficialis flexor pollicis longus pronator quadratus now to the posterior side abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis thank you